So you've just picked up the new Africa DLC for the Hunter Call of the Wild, and you've noticed things are a little bit different this time around. We've got to rethink the way that we approach the hunting here on the savannas. And in today's video, I'm going to show you some of my top tips and top tips that have come from our community to make it a whole lot easier for beginners and advanced players alike. By now, you may have noticed there's a few changes that we really need to address. First off, you saw that shot I made at the beginning of the video. Well, let's take a look at what happens when I pick this up. Now, my consecutive harvest isn't fully up, but for the purpose of this kill, we'll show you what it is I want to point out. You'll notice right here, I got a 100% quick kill and a 100% integrity bonus. Even though that animal ran, we hit it in the left lung. That's right, my friends. There has been some adjustments on the new map. I can't confirm if it's happened with the rest of the maps and animals, but lunging and double lunging is now a thing. We can make it happen, for instance, with the kudus. I've done it on Cape Buffaloes. We've had it with the Springboks. We've had it with the Warthogs. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, and it's really going to adjust our play style. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is collars. We've become very reliant on our collars on the likes of Leighton Lakes, Hirschfeld, and Medved. But here, we're very limited. As you can see, I've called this kudu into range with the collar, as the antler rattler works swimmingly with them. However, what does that mean for the rest of the species? Well, we do know for a fact that the jackrabbit collar works on the jackals. That gives us two, <laughs> two collars that work. Um, but the devs did report that the warthog should be responding from the boar collar. Now, I've put it to the test in the last almost 16 hours of streaming in the, in the previous two days, and not once have I had them properly respond to it. So I do hope to see that fixed sooner rather than later. We are also testing out the Who's Deer perk with all the different colors, as there's been rumors of, hey, the elk color works with the with the Black Death, and the Who's Deer and the Deer Grunt work on the Scrub Hairs, so on and so forth. Now, we haven't had any luck as of yet, but time will tell, and our community is working hard on this, so make sure, guys, to keep your ear to the grindstone. Get in our Discord, and you'll get all the top tips before we even get them out on videos. So that covers the callers, but what are these advanced hunting tactics, Beard? Well, we have to readdress the way that we look at our hunt here in Africa, and first and foremost is how we stalk our prey. Right now, I'm on the trail of some warthogs. Now, like everything else on this map, they all spook at roughly around the 180 to 200 meter mark if you're at a standing walk. If you're at a crouch, it's not a whole lot less. And so quite often we're, we're doing what we're doing right now, as you see, and we're doing the prone. We are shimmying and shaking and slide all over the place. But as per the norm before, we make use of our cover, our surroundings. But now we have to get a little bit or sneaky, the bush ninja, if you will. So I've taken advantage of this copse of trees as I did get a mating call as I was slowly making my way across the savannah. And I'm going from tree base to tree base, from stump to stump. I'm staying under the cover. And if you watch the bottom right corner, I very rarely am I getting the little ball as I have at the moment where I'm being seen uh, between 25 and 50 meters. So when that does happen, I try to move a little quicker in my crawl, but I'm literally going from cover to cover. I've been using this tactic and I've been able to get up right on top of most animals. Now, of course, I'm watching the wind, as we all would do in a scenario like this, as well as watching my sound. I mean, these things, they're like bionic, man. They've got the sight, they've got the hearing, the smell, and we've got to play on all of those attributes and try to use it. I, I can't say to our advantage, but we need to make sure it's not a disadvantage. So right here I am keeping all those things in mind, and I'm able to get right up within range to take these things comfortably with the bow. Let's just check this out. Notice how close I was able to get up on the warthogs. These things, they're very much like the boar, but they're way more skittish like everything here in Africa. We're gonna line up and take this shot. Oh, yes, sir. Not too shabby. And we can see all the other ones running. So with everything, we're gonna worry about our need zones. We're gonna push them out and follow them after we drop this guy. 
and he is down as well. Not too shabby. That's all I can pop in this location as we do have a need zone and I want to take good care of my map. Now I want to quickly talk about the spook radius. We all need to know this and I'm sure a lot of you have discovered this. But since we've come to Africa, we've seen some big differences in the changes in the way these animals handle. I'm going to use a clip that I've taken out of my stream from the other day, the day of launch. What a stream, and thank you all for coming out. That was an amazing time. Here we're tracking down some aka Black Death. That's right, the Cape Buffalo. They're a perfect example as I know you're all out there trying to get them. I thought these would be a great example as we have all hunted bison a fair bit and I think a lot of us expected them to react the same. Well, they don't. None of the animals act the same. These things here, they will hear you at a run just over 200 meters. If you were at a walk, you can get to about 180 if they're on the move. If they've got their head down in a need zone, you can sometimes get into close to the 150, 160 mark. It can be a little bit tricky, but from that point, you most definitely want to go prone. Get into a crawl and slide through the grass, keeping obviously a close eye on your wind. Now, here's the thing, my friends, and it's a theory that we're working on and it really seems to be working. If they are not with their heads down, if they are looking towards you, they can see you at a ridiculous range. In fact, Sean and I have been putting it to the test and it, it was like 250 to 300 meters. If they saw us, they were gone. And that seems absolutely ludicrous. Now we will continue to test this, but as it stands right now, my friends, make sure to be cautious. 180 to 200 meters at a walk, nothing any more than that, as long as they're not looking at you. Get down into a crouch, work your way up around the 150. From 150 at the very most, then you're gonna wanna get down to prone. Work your way up in prone, getting close. If you get in close enough, the majority of the time, if they see you and you are within 50 to 100 meters, they will often charge you if you're looking to get charged. That's how you get that done, my friends. But you also want to be in that range if you're going to use the Big Bertha, the 470. And the reason for this is you can hit it so much harder. This is not a long range weapon. You can adjust your zeroing and perhaps over time there might be some adjustments to it. But I believe it is working as designed. When you're in close, the thing is an absolute beast. Now there are other options to hunting these. Uh, we are going to do, I have actually a hot spots video coming out that I'll try to get out in the next day or two. And it's got a little bit more tack to it, talking a little bit about them and we'll maybe do some actual detailed species style vids. Now just a couple more things to quickly go over and we'll let you get back to Africa. I wanted to talk about a few of the changes that are going to help you. For instance, the 4570. This thing is the Beast. It is handling like we've never seen it before. Expansive Worlds has fixed it, they have adjusted it, and it is a very viable weapon. In fact, I do not think it's going to ever make it very far away from my loadout. It will become a permanent feature. This thing is hitting like a Mack truck, a 7mm style weapon with the integrity of a 270. Makes it an absolute must have. Now, of course, one of the downsides being that, unfortunately, the scope that comes with it, the only one we have an option for, is not the best, but you can certainly make do with it. It only goes up to 150 meters, and let's face it, on this map, you might want to be using something with the Argus, but you can certainly get good enough with that and lift and worry about a little bit of drop. You can make it work. This gun is hitting like a Mack truck. I cannot stress it enough. Now, the next tip is arguably, probably, most likely, <laughs> most definitely, one of the most important ones that I can throw out there. A lot of people have been complaining that, hey, there's not enough animals here on Africa. Oh, it's too wide open. I can't find anything. My friends, these animals heard. Now, we have seen this herding effect, this new mechanic that was added not that long ago on Leighton, and a lot of people were complaining the whitetails had disappeared, but when you found a herd of whitetails, there was a large number of them, and you had a very good chance at finding a good one in that group. So how does this affect the change in our hunting here in Africa? Well, my friends, a lot of the animals 
In fact, the majority of the animals here do herd, and in order to find them, you simply need to locate a track. Obviously, if you find multiple tracks, you know you're on a herd. Follow those tracks. Use the landscape to get within range that you can start to take them out. You can't do it one by one like we did in the past over on Leighton and Hirsch and Medved, where you could shoot at 300, really 250 meters plus, and they wouldn't spook. Now they do spook even shot at a full 300 meter spread. So by finding these tracks, following them, keeping an eye out ahead for coats of trees or cover or just bushes out in the savannah that you can move to and from to keep your visibility down, keep your sound down, locate that herd and pick out the ones that you want. Keeping in mind your hunting pressure, shoot the one, catch up to that herd again, and continue to leapfrog as such until you've taken out the whole herd if that's what you choose to do. Get to know the cover. There's different types of bushes that offer different types of cover. As you've seen with the trees previously in this video, some of the grass, the tall grass that are in little clumps they work really really well i tried to keep this video as short and sweet as i could just passing on the information that we have discovered thus far some of this you might already know some of it you might not have nonetheless if you've enjoyed this my friends please do me a favor hit that like button do it with two hats if you gotta consider sharing it on your social media your reddit wherever it is you like to hang out make sure to join all of the things that are popping up on your screen right now and of course if you are new here hit that little subscribe tag the bell beside it and you know the whole do it with two hands thing you should really do that thank you my friends make sure to come and join us on tuesdays and thursdays at 4 p.m Pacific standard time for our live streams and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in and around between there so get into discord come and say hi you'll keep up to date on everything that's happening and all the events that we're doing thank you my friends we'll see you next time yes sir